Tea Uncle Gold Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Uncle Gold Podcast. My name is Borna Zuber. Um, you're listening to the podcast that helps you find the gold in life. And if you're looking for answers on how to achieve success, today I invited a special guest on. Um, he's been a guest on my other creation channel um, where we talked about sales and uh, lifelong learning. Um, please help me in welcoming Sasha Peter, my high school, prof- uh, my college professor. Uh, how are you, Sasha? How are you today? Uh, very fine. Thank you. Uh... Greetings to you and to the to to your followers. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, great to have you. Um, I'm glad that we can do this in English um, so to also cover this part of the audience because we already done um, two videos in Croatian and we talked about a lot of useful topics there, but um, half of the audience is then um, not privileged to uh, listen to those. Um, so um, for, for everyone that li- didn't listen to the Croatian version, um, can you give us a little background on yourself? How did your story get started? Uh, what did you do in your career? and where are you right now? Uh, in a nutshell, I was born in 1962. Uh, some part of my uh, education and youth I spent in a uh, socialist country uh, where uh, I tried to learn things that are not that usually um, fixed as the political knowledge. Then during the war and after the war I, I worked as a business consultant and uh, I spent 13 years in the representation office of American Corporation 3M and in the last 15 years I am professor at the University North and dozen of other colleges and universities in Croatia and in some other countries like France, Finland, Lebanon, Portugal, Switzerland, Germany, Poland. So uh, I work with young people for the last 30 years. Uh, I always said that I would be happy that I had somebody, some uncle, let's say, who could give me the knowledge I have now. Uh, 30 or 40 years ago, it was impossible. So I hope that my experience, that my uh, knowledge, that my education uh, can give some useful tips and tricks to, to, your, to your followers. I believe that they could find uh, at least something useful that they can uh, apply in their daily business or, or in their life because People usually think that what is happening in our life is quite different from what is happening in your business, in your professional life. This is wrong. The mistakes you are doing at home, you will do at your job. The good things that you're doing at your job, you will do at home. So when you accept the fact that there is only one life, and that you have to find a combination of private and business uh, if you want to live uh, a happy life. Because if you, I mean, there is always a leverage. If you invest too much in business, then you are missing time with your family. If you invest uh, a lot of time into you, your private, joys, whatever, then you will never make a successful career. So since the equilibrium is mission impossible, so you cannot find uh, an equilibrium that lasts, you may have the, 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 the equilibrium in a moment, but it's always like this. So if you can succeed with um, having just a small waves up and down, I believe that is something that you can call life success. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, it's hard for people to find that. And some some spend their whole lives searching for the answer to that question. Um, you've gone into education some, um, you said, around 20 years ago. Um, I believe in lifelong learning. And that was the first video that we did uh, on the creation channel. Um, for someone who is maybe just going on about with their daily routine and doesn't have a habit of learning new things, how can people start learning to improve their lives, to improve their careers? Uh, I must admit that I was really curious as a kid. And I spent a lot of time asking my parents why, what, who. And I was really an annoying kid. <laughs> I admitted that. So uh, since uh, I never abandoned this curiosity, um, I am a really good example of lifelong learning. Uh, I'm always saying that I will have, I will be 100 years old and I will still read something, uh, learn something, ask questions, and things like that. So, uh, whoever thinks that by finishing some level of education, he gained all the knowledge he or she, all the knowledge he or she can get, this is a huge mistake because uh, when, when I graduated at the Faculty of Economics in 1986, it was a kind of research showing that uh, my knowledge, the quality of my knowledge, applicability of my knowledge can, can last at least seven years. That means that when I finished the faculty and start working, I shouldn't listen, I shouldn't read anything new because next seven years, everything was the same. Uh, today's researchers show that in the, uh, in the scientific branches like economics or sociology or things like that, uh, the, the applicability, the quality of the knowledge that you can get at the faculty lasts the mostly 12 to 18 months. That means that if you're a student and you're finishing your first year, you have to learn something new immediately because next year a lot of things will change. In the technical sciences, uh, things I even worst because the, the quality of knowledge lasts six to 12 months. That means that if you are not ready to define uh, the niche you would like to be the best in, if you expect that your professors will give you all the knowledge you need, uh, please bear in mind that, for example, a uh, professor who is doing lecturing for 20 years, let's say, and didn't invest in his knowledge or just invested something average, I mean, two to three articles during the year, maybe one new book, something like that, basically gives you knowledge that he acquired 20 years ago from the professor that acquired his knowledge 20 years ago. From professor that acknowledged 20 years ago. And basically, in, in some situation, I have found professors that could very easily lecture in history, uh, history of informatics, history of economics, but they don't know anything about what is active, what is current, what is applicable now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel that a lot of people have kind of met at least one person like that in their educational life that hasn't been up to date. Um, but, uh, uh, maybe just additional comment. Mm -hmm. I always think that the education is a two-way street. And I have to be ready to learn from you, to ask you questions because you know things that I don't know. If I want to motivate you to learn from me. 
So I believe that the best combination of knowledge is, let's say, knowledge of the elderly generation, wisdom, uh, experience, and the energy, ideas, information of the young generation. So uh, just uh, separate education by age or by sex or by, uh, or by uh, titles or something like that, it's a really uh, wrong approach. Namely, I had uh, even better conversation about economy, about the entrepreneurship with the people who get maybe high school or even uh, baccalaureus than with some of my colleagues that have titles and, and uh, they are professors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um it works I mean, uh, theory is a nice thing, but in, in the time to come, theory will, will go to the artificial intelligence. You will need people who can connect the dots. And uh, thanks to the help and support of the AI, you could solve the problem. So, as I said, it's always a combination. It's never one way or another. It's always a combination. Mm, yeah, um, I also feel that people who employ the um, principle in every aspect of their life, where they're learning from everyone they meet in every aspect, they exponentially get better in everything they do. So if you can learn from your mom, your teacher, your uh, neighbor, your uh, you know like office clerk, like someone you just met on the street, like you can get valuable information from different types of topics because people are not just one thing they're not just what they do at school or what they do at their job we are multidisciplinary so we have to learn from a lot of people not just one um, my big question here is actually uh, that most people don't want to learn and they're rather just sit on the couch and watch TV and then they're like, oh no, I, I don't want to do anything, right? Um, how does one pull themselves um, towards a better life, a better future? How does one muster the energy and the motivation um, to kind of get off the couch and start doing more things and learning from people, doing new things, expanding their life and going towards a better future? When you were uh, presenting the idea of capability of learning from everybody, you just give the story of my life. So I, from, from the time I can remember, I was always much more impressed with the knowledge than with the titles. Okay, it was a kind of rebellion in, in, in primary school. And high school, but even still now, I will respect much more a person who can teach me something than the person who has a lot of uh, titles or political power or something like that. Yeah. Why is that? Maybe in a country that's like Croatia, where the politics is still uh, conducting the economy, you may be a member of the leading party or some other party, and then say, who cares? I will uh, wait for my pension here. It's quite uh, an easy job. Uh, every month salary is precisely in my pocket. So there is no need for, uh, for any additional efforts. Uh, what is and will be the problem of such people is that very soon, I mean, sooner than they expect, I would say in three and five years, uh, they will uh, become not needed, obsolete. Uh, because even uh, political parties, even uh, local governments will say, hey, I need somebody to solve the problem. Uh, because in your life, you will meet only two types of people. The people who are your problem, and the people who are solution to a problem. So, for example, uh, until you have enough money to pay such people, it's okay. It's not your money, and then you can give it away. But when you will have to earn for that money, when you will have to say, hey, 
Hey, I hope you're enjoying the Uncle Gold podcast. If you want to support this whole project, make sure you go to the second channel called Uncle Gold Podcast Clips. There I create short form videos with the best topics from the interviews that I do on the main channel. You get their videos daily. They're separated nicely into playlists so you can choose the topic that you want to watch most. And now let's go back to the video. Guys, this year we have received 50% less of the budget or 75% less of the budget. Then you will say, hey, sorry guys, but I need somebody to do something for me. So definitely, uh, I'm always warning the people from, from the political parties, from the local governments, when I'm saying, I know it's a brilliant situation. You are coming to job, or even if you don't come, you just say, hey, I'm not in the mood to work today, so I will come later. And nobody uh, is getting sweat. But if they will say, hey, you have uh, a lot of papers on your desk, it has to be finished because we will not get the EU grants or something like that, then if you say, ah, who cares? They will say, hey, so long, farewell, and we'll hire somebody that will uh, work this thing and, and will uh, finish on time. So definitely, I can tell you that uh, being on a job like this sounds nice. But since your knowledge is getting older, is getting unneeded, obsolete, it could happen to you that after 25 years, you don't know what is uh, to be done if you have some job to finish. So, uh, my, my suggestion to all young people, particularly young people, hey guys, find your niche, find your part of knowledge, invest to it, make a teams because nobody knows everything, uh, create the teams, and do your best, and all the others will do their best. Uh, this is the only way your knowledge will remain fresh. Your knowledge will remain uh, useful, and with such knowledge, you will always find a customer who will pay for it. Mm -hmm. Without this uh, uh, knowing how to solve the problem, as I said, maybe just a few years until the economic situation will become even worse. Then you will need experts. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned a great point there, which is building a team. Um, since you worked at a American company, um, could you give us first a a little comparison on how Croatian companies work compared to international or American companies. And then the second question would kind of be similar to it. Um, how do you build a great team around you and in your company? Uh, the first and the main difference is that working for a 3M, I had free hands to suggest any changes to give new ideas and everything else, besides free things. I wasn't allowed to offense my colleagues in any way. Um, politics were not allowed to be discussed in, in the office. And the third thing, of course, I shouldn't ask uh, about the salaries. Hmm. Everything else was even encouraged to, to, to uh, be asked to be done because this is the only way how you can uh, upgrade your knowledge constantly. Uh, so there, uh, the team was something like, okay, it's quite normal that you don't, that you cannot like all the people. Uh, there is something that we can call a uh, biorhythm, something that you can call uh, uh, difference in, in personality, okay but in 
American company, I was encouraged to support some of my colleagues that didn't like me and I couldn't find a way to connect with them. So uh, during the working hours, if they needed help, I was the first one to help them and vice versa. After 5 p.m., bye-bye, so long, and see you tomorrow. In Croatian companies, a teamwork means that we, we are sitting in the same room and we are team. And I have a really bitter experience of three or four companies where people in the same room didn't talk to each other. When they, uh, I mean, in American company, if I have any private problem with you, for example, then we can go to the manager. We can openly discuss it. Where is the problem? Uh, we can find a solution or we will not find a solution and we'll be fine. In uh, Croatian companies, uh, you and me can be in fight for five years. I had, as I said, an experience where people desk to desk didn't talk for three to five years to each other. And how can you share the information? How can you share uh, the problem, the solutions, if you don't talk to each other? On the other hand, in uh, some of my managers in creation companies, <clears throat> So very easy going, for example, Sasha, while your figures are okay, I will not call you. Uh, when you see me in the hall, say hello. And when I invite you, then you are the problem, which sounds very, very, uh, very, you know, uh, uh, Marlon Brando style. But uh, basically, uh, even in uh, four excellent years, I didn't have a full information what, I mean, I knew that I have an excellent uh, scores results, but I didn't know how this can help my colleague. I didn't know how this, what can be done better. Uh, I didn't know what can be added so that I can, uh, Broad the, the, the results. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when I have one bad quarter, my manager called me and say, "Hey, you have bad figures. Make it better. Bye bye." Again, I know that they are not good, but I don't know how. I don't know what he suggests to me. So this is something that never happened in the American company. The American company, my, let's say, boss, was my supporter. He wasn't there to yell at me. He wasn't there to, to uh, show me his ego and to uh, show me how important he is, that he is a master of life and death. His uh, role there was to support me that I can knock on his door anytime that uh, he can uh, invite me at least once a week. Sometimes it was two minutes talk like, Sasha is excellent, okay, I'll please continue, don't change anything. And some discussions were held for 30 minutes where we were discussing some new products, new ideas, something like that. So. In the time that is coming, uh, teamwork will be the, the most important part of any organization. Mm -hmm. Because uh, in a situation where um, everything is changing very fast, in a situation where, for example, one Bill Gates and his IT friends are buying land so that they can produce food or they can raise the cattle or something like that. So <clears throat> when there is an information that it could be really a tricky situation, a crisis situation, and I'm not talking just 
a COVID-19 situation. I'm talking about the next five years where it will be important to, to, to invest in the knowledge that can get. Uh, for example, IT is important part of our lives, and I agree with that. And that's the reason why European Union set funds for next seven years in just two fields, green economy and digitalization. Mm -hmm. Basically, green economy is everything. This is food, forests, this is... Um, recyclable materials. Recyclable material, uh, greenhouses, smart cities, uh, use of drones in the agricultural uh, production, uh, helping uh, tractors and the trucks to be uh, in 5G motion, so without the drivers. And on the other hand, you have a digitalization that is basic for things like that. So uh, whoever thinks that it will be uh, uh, just two or three years where we will just calm down and wait that the storm passes, we'll be surprised because everything will change in those three years. On the other hand, you can notice that there is uh, much more earthquakes and uh, volcano eruptions or uh, or the tsunamis of, or things like a natural phenomenon than 10 or 15 years ago. So in this situation, you cannot just say, oh, whatever will be, will be que sera, sera. Mm, then you will have to say, okay, I am expert in certain area of economy or law or food production or whatever. <clears throat> and I need some members of my team that can uh, uh, help me to find a uh, good niche, global niche, so that I can use my 5G, so that I can do business, for example, like you can have <clears throat> your conversations with, with, your, with the experts from all over the world. Uh, that's, that's the idea that, that you can start a business and have a colleagues from all the countries as you need them. Mm -hmm. um, you wrote 30 <coughs> books and uh, recently you wrote a paper on how um, specialization is for insects. Um, could you comment on that topic since you mentioned here going a lot into a niche? Um, what are some of the things that people can do to kind of make them more either general or adapt to new technologies and trends that are coming? Uh, I've used uh, a sentence from one science fiction book and I added uh, the book that is a brilliant, it's called Martians, uh, Martians, uh, where uh, there's an excellent movie. I'm calling it Robinson Crusoe on Mars, where it shows that uh, if you have enough knowledge, then team can support you. So. Basically, uh, there is no problem if you are specialized in some part of job or business or, or science or something like that. But you need uh, somebody that is, uh, that is uh, capable to connect you and some other, uh, some other experts all together. So, as I said before, I'm not somebody that will tell uh, the only <clears throat> Hey, I hope you're getting value out of this video. I wanted to provide some value back to you and tell you about this tool that I use to make my videos better. It's called TubeBuddy and it's a free Chrome extension. It basically gathers all your data from the channel and helps you analyze, organize everything from thumbnails, titles, keywords to analyzing your competitors. And you can use it to create better YouTube videos for yourself or to just get a better overview on other people's channels. And if you use the affiliate code below in the comments. You will get a small discount on purchasing their package options, but 
As I said, YouTube TubeBuddy is a free extension tool. And if you use the code Borna Tubers, you get a small discount and help me with the whole channel. But let's get back to the video now. So there is no question, uh, do we need a specialist or not? We need them, of course. But um, maybe 20, 30, 50 years ago, you could find your job, even if you're a specialist in just one tiny segment of business or, or medicine or something like that. But uh, now, if you don't have at least some knowledge about the other things that are involved in your uh, special knowledge, then you will be uh, huh, very lonely, I would say, because uh, it's like hmm, in Croatia, years ago we have a small shops very specialized for some things you know in zagreb is it's called chela street and something like that so uh for that time it was okay that you enter in one shop then you buy shoes then you go to other shop then you buy ice cream then you go somewhere and um, etc etc now you have shopping malls uh, where you can find everything you need when you go there. So that's the reason why these small shops, boutiques, will lose the customers, particularly now when there is no potential of uh, visiting, uh, trying <laughs> goods, things like that, uh, because everybody will go to the shopping malls. So my, my idea is that it's very good if you can find people that can connect the dots, that they can say in this project we need this one, this one, this one, this one, four, and I'm the fifth. I will be responsible for this task. Somebody else will, for example, uh, for design, somebody else will be for for a web page, somebody else will be for something else. And then we can, as a team, succeed. Otherwise, I will be excellent in my part, but all the rest will be done very poorly. So the quality of my work, my job, will not be recognized because everything else will be not attractive, not good, so that's the reason why I'm always saying teams are the solution for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Especially communication. Like um, every time that I wasn't satisfied in a company, it was because there was a problem with communication. Somebody wasn't communicating anything, um, something or anything properly. And a lot of information were lost. Not, inform not enough information was shared. Uh, you couldn't get to the solution fast enough. And then the problem would kind of drag on for a long time and uh, like you would just look at the problem for two weeks <laughs> and just hope for for the solution to come from somewhere so um, do you think that it will happen to um, all companies like small and big that they will have to um, diversify their teams into not just one field specialist but multi-field um, specialists or generalists it is already happening Google, Microsoft already has uh, multitasking teams that, that can be uh, applied, let's say, in a different situation. You uh, said it correctly, uh, the communication is the base, the basics of everything. Uh, this is something really strange because communication is something very simple. You speak, I listen, I ask questions, you listen. You answering, I listen. People usually think that the communication is that uh, I'm talking, you are talking, I'm talking, you are talking. And now I'm only saying to my, uh, to the companies where I have trainings that uh, two monologues are not dialogue. So if you are talking and I'm talking, this is not communication, this is not dialogue. This is just two ships passing in the mm -hmm. night. So basically, uh, if you 
agree that a lot of people are listening only to be capable to answer, but not to understand, then we have solution. So if we talking about anything, and if you speak and I'm listening to you so that I can understand your reasons why you're talking about that, why is this important to you? What do you want to achieve with that? Then I can give my opinion because we cannot fight about my opinion. Uh, since you have a right to give your opinion, I have a right to give my opinion. On the other hand, um, I am in position when I listen to you to ask you a question. The better question you ask, the better answer you will get. And if you can understand much easily what is in my head, what I want to achieve, what I want to do, then you don't have to like me, you don't have to be my friend or, or, uh, or uh, you know, uh, best man on the wedding or something like that. Yeah. But I know that when we are doing job together, then I can rely on you. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that I don't have any strong connections with them. We have a different interest. I mean, it's it always great to do something with the people you like. This is far the best situation. But very often I did an excellent business with the people that didn't uh, like me, they didn't, uh, uh, but they respect me. They knew that I can add my share and that we did job together. They pay me fairly and we continue the, 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 the cooperation. I mean, uh, I don't have to like or to love anybody I'm working with but I can respect their knowledge. I can support their knowledge with my knowledge, and then we can do excellent job uh, before the others. Hmm. I agree uh, maybe 50% there. Um, I think in the short term, you can work basically with anybody, but in the long term, if you're working with people that you really don't like, I think that the team play there is, is very, very hard there. So, uh, Borna, agree completely. If you don't like the people, at least a little bit, yeah, something yeah. a little bit, then you will never work on the long term. Yeah, definitely. But a job or two uh, can be always done. Yeah, that's true. If you, that's true. If you don't find any connections in those one to three jobs, then it's much better to say, hey, Bye bye. I did find somebody else. Mm -hmm. In the short term, it comes down to patience, right? Well, in the short term, it comes to results. Uh, the main reason is to to earn the money. Uh, in the long term, there is emotion that you would like to enjoy uh, during the job. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason it's very hard to enjoy with somebody you don't like. So. Mm -hmm. I think that we agree that in the long term, I would find somebody that suits me better than, than somebody who is just a rule, not polite or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Um, tell me, um, you mentioned there um, finding passion in, in what you do. Um, I think that's a big topic right now, as the internet gave a lot of people a lot of information, solutions, uh, opportunities, things like that. People are kind of lost in between all the options that they have. Uh, do you have any tips or ideas, even for um, not just for students that are just starting their career, but even people who are later in their career? How do they find what they are really passionate about? How do they maybe change their career in that direction? And what can they do about it? Uh, if you give the information to your customer that you are seeing him as the wallet that should pay you uh, the service of the product, then in the long term, this customer will not be satisfied. But if you give 
this passion that is showing to your customer that you would like to give them, give him, give them uh, the best possible product or uh, service, then the money they will give to you is just the reward, their gratefulness that you solved their problem. So whoever believes that uh, uh, there is no friend in, in business, there is no uh, emotions in business and something like that, he or she may try. But very soon he or she will find herself <laughs> very unsatisfied and some emotions cannot be bought with money. Uh, okay, I'm not saying that you should give all the best from you and then don't get paid. But um, I was working in sales for 22, 23 years, something like that. And I always said that I never sell anything. I always helped to my customer to make a decision, to make a choice, to buy something from me. Okay, maybe it sounds, you know, ah, he is, he's pretending to be wise or something like that, but it's true. I never uh, came to the customer uh, just talking about the product and the service. I never came to the customers forcing him or her to buy. Uh, two or three times in my life, I suggested uh, my big customers uh, to buy something else because our product was not that good. My colleagues told me that I'm crazy, that I'm giving my customer to the competition, but they told them that I'm not giving my customer a competition, I'm still their solution who can find solution for them. In all three cases, all the customers came back to me and remain with me until I was in, in those companies. So definitely, uh, if you show passion in, in, in the world of, uh, let's say, emotional cleansing, uh, that there is no need for emotions in business and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you will get uh, a lot of problems. Okay, for example, uh, five years from now, I was the consultant for the company that was uh, in trade with uh, car spare parts. And when their uh, uh, partners came to Croatia, after the meetings, they took them for a good lunch uh, to, to walk around Zagreb. Uh, they spent some time with them and it was not a problem because they would like to establish a personal connection. When they came to Germany, they were shocked because two young executives who were thinking that they are just distributors from Croatia. They uh, invited them to the meeting room. They just bring some water and some glasses. No cookies, nothing else. When they finish the meeting, they say, okay, thank you very much for coming to Germany, bye-bye. And when we discuss what they will do next, they say, uh, first of all, we will write to his manager to say that he has very bad executives who don't understand the business. And on the other side, they say uh, we will break our contract with them and we will find somebody else who respect us as the distributor. So definitely uh, you are not selling uh, goods, products, or services. You are solving the problem the customers have. And doing this without emotion, without passion, is a very, very good idea, believe me. Yeah, 
All right. Um, when it comes to consulting, how do you approach a company? Because now you mentioned a lot of things here about sales, and I'm sure that some people can uh, take some tips out of that. But uh, when you're consulting a company or a private client or um, just in a meeting, how do you uh, structure it and how do you go about um, developing a strategy for them? I'm doing the same thing like I did when I was in sales. Uh, I give short intro and then I'm asking what are your needs? So I'm not trying to be smart ass, sorry for the word, so that I can show to my uh, partner that uh, I am the wisest person, the smartest person in the world and he knows nothing. I had the same approach when I was working with sales. I was presenting myself, basic info about the products, and then it was a question, okay, what are your needs? So definitely I'm always uh, asking this thing, and I'm never forcing. Uh, very often guys can tell me, oh, I cannot do that, or we are not doing that, or something like that. And I say, hey, you are adult, you can make your own decision. I gave you the information what is, what can give you results. If you think that I'm wrong or this is not applicable to you, let's try something else. Yeah. But if he or she tell me the next time, um, oh, this is also not applicable, then I'm joking that on the big wall in Zagreb, it was written a brilliant sentence called, we have problems for all your solutions. <laughs> so uh, when you have customers who wants that you give him a solution, but this solution must be what he expects and what he was doing last few years and it was completely wrong, but he needs you to prove that he is right. And it's much better to say thank you very much. Uh, I tried. They always pay me for the full amount. But I'm not trying to force them to convince them that uh, they must change. If they can't or, or they won't. That's on their side. Yeah. No long farewell. Yeah, um, Sasha, a big um, stepping stone for people is when they start developing goals for themselves. Um, do you set goals for yourselves and do you have any tips for companies or students who want to set goals for them in life? Uh, I mean, first of all, uh, it's very important to know your potential, to know where you are good at. Because if you know what, where you are good at, then you can find what parts of the market you can cover. After that, you have to check which experts you need to make a good team. And the third thing is to define the goal. Uh, you can make uh, really, really uh, strong goal, but in that case, you need to make some smaller steps between. Because if you make yourself a really a small goal, then you will gain it sooner or later. But if you, uh, what is the a sentence, uh, shoot for the moon, if you miss, at least you will finish among the stars. Yeah. Uh, so uh, don't give up from the big uh, goals. Even if you want to spend more time with your kids, bear in mind that your kids will grow up. And if you are not be uh, financially in position to finance their dreams, their plans, then the fact that you spend with them uh, 15 or 18 years just being home 
will not help them. So this balance uh, between your goals, goals of your family, your health, of course, uh, it's always has to be in balance with the money. I mean, each one of us has a bills to pay. That means if you start from that, you will need to turn some money. The more you want to achieve, then you have to make a balance with some other things. I know several entrepreneurs that did huge mistake, two mistakes. First of all, they employed their relatives, expecting that they will support him in his goals. In almost every case, they, it was a horrible idea. And the companies were uh, finished. Um, Sooner uh, rather than later. I mean, they, they, they really <laughs> didn't achieve anything. Well, on, the, on the other hand, the other mistake was that a lot of people didn't involve their kids in the business. They were saying, uh, just relax, I will, I will do everything, just enjoy, play, go to school or something like that. And, uh, and the children, instead of being involved in what parents are doing, they were extracted from the lives of their parents, from the business. And now when uh, those guys are older, their kids are not interesting to continue the business. So definitely, if you want to create a goal, first of all, define what goal means to you. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, I think a friend of mine spoke a lot about that, uh, how if you don't have a clear goal, you probably won't achieve it because you kind of don't know in which direction you're going. You, you kind of have it set, but not directly. And it's like, I want to buy a car. Yeah, but, but what car? You know, what year? How much money? What color? How fast will you drive it? Like, where will you drive it? You know, and, and the more specific you go with the description, uh, the easier it will be to kind of visualize it and, and go after it. And uh, I think it's important to do that because even if you um, have a lot of offers for a lot of different cars, you will say no to all the other offers that are not specifically the one that you're looking for. Is that a mistake that you see often that people say yes to the things that they shouldn't? Uh, I mean, definitely, when goal is clear to you, it's much easier to find all pluses and all minuses uh, how to achieve it. If, if you just say, I want to be rich, then it's really uh, undefined uh, decision uh, how to become rich. But if you define what reach means to you, what reach means to your family, what reach means to your colleagues, to your business, then, then you can uh, find really a balance with everything you want to do. So I agree with you, the more precise your goals are, the, the easier and with the less effort you will gain them. Yeah, that's true. Um, a lot of people set money as the, the big goal and one of the main things they go after. Um, I feel that a lot of young people see sometimes that as the only solution. And then again, on the other side, I see a lot of older people who have gone for the money, but they say, no, it's not the optimum solution. Can you speak a little bit about that and tell maybe the younger people like where they should aim at and maybe even older people like how they should approach it in a different way? I think I mentioned that you need money uh, to pay your bills. On the other hand, money uh, is, uh, you are not uh, exchanging your work for the money. You are exchanging your time. So uh, the more time you invest in earning money, the less time you have for yourself, the less time you have for uh, to take a rest. Uh, I think that the Steve Jobs is one excellent example 
when you work in uh, 24 hours a day that there is no all money in the world that can save you uh, f uh, from the death. Uh, okay, it is impossible to define what is the optimum. Everybody is deciding for himself. But if we want to be really open, whoever can find at least some balance between money, time, family, health, and something like this, can be considered as a lucky guy. Uh, there is a lot of uh, books. I was happy that I was born and raised in a country who was consisted from the six republics. One of them was a republic where there were a lot of Muslims. Some of my neighbors were Muslims, so it was a great experience sharing recipes, uh, ideas. I, I was 18 when I read the Bible, Torah, and, and Quran, and it was a one, once-in-a-lifetime experience. And I can uh, confirm that there is a lot of wisdom there uh, who were telling me that even the biggest sultans, the biggest Viziers, uh, the biggest uh, uh, kings, didn't brought anything with them in the grave. So, if you can uh, do what is making uh, what's making you happy, is making money, is making you happy. It's okay, but then uh, if you pay this money with your health, then Please be prepared to understand what somebody else understand much earlier and manage to live uh, the quality life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of the main question that everybody wants is to have a quality life where they have enough time, enough money, family, all of that combined together. And th that's kind of the... Um, ideal right because if you have all of that in order then your life just works better right and then you have more energy you feel better you want to do more things you're um more open to new ideas and starts uh, everything starts to kind of spin upwards in a positive direction uh i must say that i'm slowing down uh, not in a way that i would like because there is a lot of invitations, questions, lecturing, training, and something like that. But more and more technical parts, I'm leaving to my son and to his friends who just finished the universities, who uh, four of them are our neighbors and they were very often a guest in our house. And they listened to me, learning from me. So I'm really happy that uh, I can find at least some time for myself, for my wife, uh, just to take a rest. But I think that I still have at least 10 to 15 good years to give my uh, experience, to share my knowledge, to learn from the others still, mm -hmm. and then to uh, enjoy those next 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? Um, maybe even from the technological perspective, maybe from the business perspective, where are you, uh, where are you keeping your eyes open right now? Uh, definitely in education, because this is my field of interest. I'm trying to, to follow up uh, the development of technology, which is must. But on the other hand, I'm not abandoned the old experience, the old knowledge, the old cases. Uh, not everything is just uh, IT. Not everything in business is just uh, uh, artificial intelligence. There are certain facts. One of them is that we didn't invent any new emotion 
from the all Egypt, all Greece, all Rome. We are just using different technology in uh, transportation. We are using different technologies in uh, constructing buildings, roads, something like that. We uh, are communicating uh, with the mobile phones, uh, something like that. But basically, all the emotions are the same. So I am I'm supporting my, my students as well as young people who are coming to my trainings to be very well trained for using of technologies. But of course, to gain some knowledge, uh, what can be done if, for example, there is no electricity at all. So uh, I'm trying to give them some, uh, because uh, when I was younger, I was a Boy Scout, so I can still go to the woods, I can still find the drinking water, I can still find uh, leaves that can be eaten, mushrooms, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to, to give them the information that there is okay to be part of the modern era. But it is also okay to listen elderly people, to ask them for, uh, for a potential solution, for the opinion, because uh, not everything happened in the last 20 years. Yeah, exactly. Nature is so powerful. Like I feel after a, a long week of work, uh, just a walk in nature kind of raises my energy and I just feel better. I relax instantly and um, it's the environment. It's getting away from the technology sometimes as well. So uh, I think that's very important for having balance in life. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. Go outside, enjoy the nature while we still have some. And, uh, and uh, as I say, try to find the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you have to invest into green technologies and uh, nature itself to kind of keep it as long as possible. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Yeah. Um, Professor Sasha, I usually leave um, a golden question for the end of the podcast where um, it kind of summarizes everything up and, in my opinion, provides the most value for people. Um, the, the idea of the podcast is that you probably didn't have the Uncle Gold who taught you everything about life, gave you all the knowledge, gave you the money, gave you the experience, gave you everything. Um, so you have to go through your life and find the gold in life for yourself, right? And bring knowledge to this podcast is kind of the main goal. So um, can, you, can you tell the listeners how does one find the gold in life and how will one start even by doing it? Uh, okay. Maybe I'm not the best person for something like that, but I can share my, I wouldn't say secrets, but my way of life. First of all is uh, emotions. Uh, so whatever I do, I'm trying to put some emotion in it. As I said, I would like to be uh, the solution of your problem, not your problem. Second thing is that uh, I'm listening a lot. So I'm always telling people that uh, the best salesperson are not the ones who talk too much, but the ones who, uh, who listens. And the uh, third thing, as I mentioned several times, the balance. So if you show that you have a quality life, then people will trust you that you can give them the quality in your services and products. Mm. If you live a confused life, a nervous life, sick life, let's say, then I believe that they will not be very happy to, to, to do business with you. Yeah. I um, hope it helps. Mm. Some powerful words there. Um, 
Emotions, yeah. So many people go through life with, without any emotions. Well, uh, or, or just the negative specter or they're angry and depressed and sad and all, all of that all the time, um, which is a shame. Like li life is given to us so we can enjoy it, right? Like it, it doesn't make sense to be negative and down all the time. So uh, we should definitely go towards having higher emotions and better emotions and feeling great about ourselves and doing the things that we love. I can tell you one thing that when you are positive, when you have a positive emotions, then your health is much better than when you are negative, bitter, uh, angry. So try it. Try to be happy and you will see how, how better your health will be than in the case that you are angry mm. to anyone and anything. Yes, I agree on that one. Um, Professor Sasha, uh, thank you very much for joining us here in the podcast. Uh, it was a great experience and I, I really enjoyed talking to you um, again. Thank you very much for the invitation and I'm looking forward to hear the questions of your followers. All mm -hmm. the best. Uh, perfect. Um, can you just tell us um, for the end if somebody wants to reach out to you where they can find you? Uh, my email is sasa at sasapeta.com. My phone is uh, 285 for Croatia, 912361516. And I have that page uh, www.sasapeta.com. All right. And on social media, I presume LinkedIn would be the best. Facebook, right? LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, you name it. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Keeping up with the technology, right? Yep. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and being here until the end of the podcast. Uh, I hope you learned a lot from um, our conversation today. We would love to hear from you which part you liked best. What was your favorite part? What are some of the things that we maybe just covered for a, a little bit where you would like to learn more about in the next episode? And yeah, leave us your comments uh, down below. Like the episode, subscribe to the channel. Also leave us a review on the podcast sites and we hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye. The Uncle Gold Podcast.